It was 1977. I had taken time off work to have a baby and stay home with her. But I still needed an income, so my mother had hired my younger sister and me to do the dirty, back-breaking work in her shop while she took care of her first infant granddaughter. My sister and I were working at our mom's antique store one summer day. Mom had just gotten a truckload of European oak furniture that needed to be cleaned and polished, have the handles screwed on and so forth. A nice looking young man came into the store and started talking to my sister, who was 17 at the time. He introduced himself as Ted Smith, and we laughed and said we must be related as mom's maiden name was Smith also. He chatted both of us up but focused on sis for the most part. He purchased an armoire but said he'd have to go get his truck, since at the moment he was driving his VWBug and old VWBug. He then asked my sister and me if we wanted to go out to dinner that night with him. We were sweaty and dirty from work. I had a baby to care for, and sis already had a boyfriend, so we said, thanks, but no thanks, Ted. He asked me to ride with him to get his truck so he could drop his bug off at the auto shop for repairs. But by that point, I had to get home to my infant right away because I was still nursing her and I thought my breasts were going to begin leaking at any minute. However, he wouldn't give up trying to get one or both of us away from the shop. He said he could come back about 10 that evening for his armoire and asked whether one or both of us be there. We replied, no, we closed the shop at six and we both have places to be tonight. He was persistent. How about tomorrow night? No, we close at six except on Saturdays when we close at four. He asked whether one of us could meet him early in the morning, like at 5.30 a.m., but neither of us wanted to. He was getting to be a bit creepy and cis and I were eye rolling at each other. Eventually, he said he was sorry, but he couldn't buy the armoire if we couldn't be flexible. We hated to give up the sale, but after he had been there for two hours, we thought he was just looking and taking up our time. We still had a lot of work to do on the furniture that had just arrived in the shop. Finally, we just wanted to finish our work and go home. At 6 p.m., as we were leaving, his VW bug was parked outside, and he asked us whether we wanted to go for coffee. He especially wanted my sister to go. We said, thanks, Ted. But no thanks, like we said earlier. We have plans, but he continued to be insistent. Finally, I said, sis, let's go. I'll take you home. Even though she had her car there, for some reason, I didn't want to leave her to drive home alone with this guy around. So he drove off in his bug, and we really didn't think of it again. Until the next year, when this picture appeared in the paper, Ted Bundy, it still sends chills up my spine, writing this, and Sis and I talk about it occasionally. We were two lucky young women that day. If either of us had agreed to go, we would have been raped and murdered like the at least 30 other women Bundy kidnapped. A few years ago, I was at the mall by myself shopping for some sheets for my new queen-sized bed. I was on the third floor of J.C. Penney's when I nearly ran into a middle-aged man while turning around to go back down an aisle I'd just been down. Whoops. Just a weird thing, right? Well, I said, sorry, and he was silent, but his eyes went wide. A little weird. So I kept looking at, examining, and feeling different sheets. Then I saw this guy was down the aisle also looking at sheets, but not really looking at them. It seemed odd. I intentionally moved to a different section that had nothing to do with bedding, and wouldn't you know it? So did this beak-faced, middle-aged dude. Now alarm bells were going off. I moved towards the section by the escalator and started looking at what couches they had. Now, this was the third floor of the department store, but the mall only had two floors, which meant to get out of the store, I'd have to first go down this one and only escalator. And when I looked across, the creepy guy was standing right next to the escalator. Now he was pretending to look at some plates, but once again, he wasn't actually looking at them, picking them up, or looking at the prices, etc. 
Now I was sure of it. This guy was following me. I'm tall, blonde, was by myself, and was wearing a yellow shirt. I was probably easy to follow around the store, except that I'm really observant, thankfully. I sat on the couch and pretended to read my phone, all the while actually watching this guy. After five minutes of him doing the same fake shopping, I was sure I was right, and he was actually just standing by the only exit, hoping to follow me down, around the mall, to the parking garage, who knows what. A girl in my hometown had been kidnapped and killed in a very similar manner a few years ago, also from a nice mall in a good part of town. With that in mind, I quickly got up and bolted to the opposite side of the level, where I had seen there was an employee booth for them to cut fabric for people. I walked straight to the front of the line and said, I'm sorry to interrupt, and I know this is weird, but a guy has been following me around the store and pretending to shop, and right now he's camped out by the only exit. They sent someone from the housewares department to talk to him and reported back to me that I was right. That this guy claimed he wasn't looking for anything specific and didn't want help, even though he'd been standing in the same spot for 10 minutes now. Luckily, Mal Security was able to take me down a freight elevator in the back of the store, all the way back to my car. I kept turning randomly on my way home to make sure I didn't drive straight back home, and to check that no one was following me. When I got home, I immediately looked at the sex offender's registry to see if any guys in the area looked like this guy. But he wasn't there. Then I felt guilty that I hadn't called the cops, because this guy clearly had creepy, bad intentions. But at the same time, he wasn't technically doing anything illegal. Still, I know he had terrible intentions for me one way or another. I know I was lucky to remember the girl from my hometown how she didn't notice a guy following her around a mall, and to have realized for myself what was going on with that creep. I never go shopping by myself anymore, and I also keep a lookout for any criminal cases involving this guy, because I will always remember his face. When I was 19, I dated a guy for a short time. On our last date, we went back to his apartment. He said he wanted to make me this new drink he created, he did, and we watched a movie on TV. Very innocent. But it was became very late, like 3 a.m., and I had a 5 a.m. class, so I asked him to take me home. He got angry, weird angry, so I told him I could walk. It was only a few miles. That made him angrier, but he took me home. Despite the early hours, I was suddenly very awake, but he took me home. The next week, he was arrested for murder. He had killed a girl a month earlier, cut her up, and dumped her in the garbage. A man was watching my siblings and me playing at the playground. At the time, I was only six, and I was with my older sister and brother, who were 12 and 8 respectively. We were riding bikes around the playground, laughing and having fun. My dad, who was around at the time, went to put something in his car and I knew that my mom was watching us from our house nearby. In the period my dad was out of sight, a bespectacled man appeared a short while later. Vaguely, I remembered thinking that he had a kind smile. I couldn't have been more wrong. He stood there for a while, smiling brightly as he watched the three of us play. I didn't think much of it, but apparently, something about him greatly unsettled my mom. She alerted my father to the strange man watching us. My father reappeared suddenly, standing between us and the man like a barrier, and then he told us to go back upstairs. It was probably the first time I had ever seen my father so serious. As we headed back up to the house, the stranger lost it, suddenly starting to scream at my father, almost sounding deranged. I couldn't make out the words then, but after my mom swept us back into the safety of our house, I asked my sister what the strange man had been shouting about. He wanted to make us his children, came her quiet reply. The creepiest thing that happened to me happened in a bathroom. I fucking hate bathrooms. The ugly, gurgling roar of flushing toilets. 
the sterile, fluorescent lighting paired with giant mirrors that showcase every flaw. The claustrophobia and uneasy quiet. I was burned, raped, molested, and nearly drowned in various bathrooms over the course of my childhood. Sometimes alone, sometimes along with my friends or sister. So I have a fear of bathrooms that has manifested in interesting ways. I was maybe seven years old at the time of this occurrence. I went into the bathroom to finish getting ready for bed. Did my business, washed my hands and was about to brush my teeth. I was not particularly freaked about being in the bathroom, just going about my normal bed routine. I reached towards the sparkly toothbrush cup I had made, and a hand popped out the top and began reaching in my direction. It was as real as anything, with veins, fingernails, and hair. The fingers wriggled, my cup tipped over and it dragged itself across the sink towards me. At this point, I began screaming bloody murder and curled into a ball in the corner near the toilet. Gripped by terror, my mom came through the door and I kept screaming. Somehow she got me to calm down, and I was baffled that the hand was gone. I figured it just went back to where it came from and never used that toothbrush cup again. It was the most vivid hallucination I've had in my life. Last year, during my senior year of college, I lived with a couple of roommates in a house in the oldest section of the town. Our landlord told us that the house had always been in the family since it was built in the 1860s. Aside from that, we didn't really know much about the history of it. It was a creaky and rickety old house, with a creepy basement that featured laundry machines and an unused coal room. Some strange things happened in that house in the fall. We began to have a lot of electrical issues. The power would randomly go out for a few minutes before switching back on by itself. The oddest thing about these power outages was that they only seemed to happen at night. I can't recall a single time when the power shut off during the day. My roommates and I simply associated the issues with the age of the house. One evening, while I was doing my laundry, I noticed something odd. The door to the coal room was closed. We usually had it propped open, so I went in to inspect it and found that it was locked. I called my roommates down, and we concluded that it was locked from inside. They all laughed it off, but I felt rather unsettled. About a week later, I was home alone, watching House of Cards in my room. My roommates were all at the library together. I declined to join since I didn't have much work to do. Suddenly, the TV flickered, and the power went out. The house went silent. I turned my phone's flashlight on and prepared to go into the basement in order to flip the breakers. As I got close to the basement door, I distinctly heard the sound of footsteps coming up creaky stairs. I'll never forget the sound, menacing and methodical. I got the hell out of there. I ran to my car and raced out from there to my girlfriend's house for the night. The next day, I told my roommates about what had happened. They didn't seem to believe me but agreed to come to check out the basement with me. When we went down the stairs, we made an extremely unsettling discovery. The coal room door was wide open with the lock broken. We were living temporarily in a small rental house in Fairbanks, next door to this middle-aged Irish guy and his wife. The wife was really mousy and quiet but the guy was a talker and a bit odd. He constantly made comments about the young woman who lived with her boyfriend in the basement apartment of our house, which I found a little creepy but, hey, whatever. One morning, my husband had a meeting in Anchorage so took a taxi to the airport super early, had his meeting and then flew home that evening. It was July 3rd. I remember it well because of what happened later. So, it is Alaska in the summer, which means it is still very light at 10.30 p.m. I am sitting in the front room reading, our one-year-old daughter is asleep in the bedroom and my hubby is in the other bedroom working on the computer. I see Ed, the neighbor, stride across our front porch and start to open our front door, which is unlocked like everyone's there. I leap up and stop him as he is coming in the front door, asking what is up. He turns and looks out the front door, up and down the street, then closes the door and starts moving out of the entryway into the house as I back up. 
I notice he is wearing dark coveralls, like what a mechanic wears, maybe he was a mechanic, I have no idea. Then he says gruffly so, where's then? He had obviously seen him leave in the taxi that morning. And I say, oh, he's in working on the computer, do you need to talk to him? Ed undergoes a complete change of character and starts stammering, oh, no, no, that's okay, don't bother him as hubby comes out into the living room asking what's up, Ed? Ed stammers some more, says it's a windy night out there and leaves. Hubby and I look at the other as Ed dashes away and both say, whoa, that was weird. Weird in a very bad way. So the next day, Ed comes to the door with this huge salmon filet, just something he wants to give us in celebration of July 4th, but I'm sure he wanted to gauge our reaction to the previous night. Hubby tells him we really didn't like him walking into our house without permission the night before, Ed starts claiming that he knocked and I told him to come in, bullshit, and that he can keep his fish and leave and we didn't ever want to have any contact with him again. We called the police and reported his unlawful entry. We warned the young woman in the basement apartment that Ed was not to be trusted. She said Ed's wife was back in Ireland for a visit so Ed was at home alone that week. Ed came into our house that night to do something bad. I can't say what but it was not a neighborly visit. He thought my husband was out of town, his wife was gone, he was wearing those coveralls, he checked the street to see if anyone saw him come into our house before closing the door. It's not like I could have run out of the house if he attacked me because my daughter was there sleeping, which he knew. I still get freaked out thinking about it. Thank goodness my husband flew home after his meeting that evening or our lives would be very different today. Me and my friend were going to a haunted house in our area. It was crazy because we never actually went inside of a haunted house, it was always usually the normal trick or treating. We were both 11 at the time. So we were walking to the haunted house. When we had finally arrived, it was creepy as hell. It looked very realistic and I knew that these people spent a lot of time in the haunted house. It was a maze-like haunted house, you had to find your way out in darkness. When we were inside my friend decided that she wouldn't go ahead in first and that I would have to lead the way. I felt annoyed but it was fine. It was very dark and I couldn't see well. A fake Michael Myers looking guy scared the shit out of me. Then there was a basement, which I sadly didn't know about as I tumbled down the stairs. They never told you how to get out so I assumed you'd have to find a door. My friend saw a door which seemed to be a way out. She opened it and I followed after her. It wasn't that good of a discovery though, as we saw some dark red in the door, which had a light on. We both ran out of there. I legit was scared of being in there now, I then saw another guy who said he found the way out. Me and my friend both went out and thanked the guy nicely. We were then walking home disturbed but relieved that we got out of there. We then saw a guy pull up saying he had candy in his car. I was very stupid back then and I decided to follow, while my friend went along too. When we made it to his car, he opened the trunk of it and had a lot of candy in there. I was so happy and wanted as much of it as possible. He then said this. I have a lot more at my house you two wanna go? We were total nincompoops and went around by the side door when my friend spotted about four other men inside of the car, some with creepy looking smiles and they were the creepiest looking guys I ever saw yellow teeth, most with balding black or brown hair. A bald guy with a tattoo on his neck. My friend got scarchedless and ran away, I followed her and the car followed behind us. The car decided to go slowly, but make sure it could see us. I assumed to not look suspicious. I then decided to run into the woods to hide, because we were in a dead end street at that point. My friend went behind some bushes. I came up with an idea and I'll forever thank the game hide and seek for this. I told my friend to come next to me and I let her down under a bunch of branches. It was different because these branches surrounded the area and they were dipped down from a small hill on a rockyish surface, almost like a small cave. I then grabbed other branches to surround us completely to the point where we would be nearly if not even impossible to see from a nearby angle. We both heard footsteps and held our breath, we then saw feet right next to us, but we went down the hill. We heard other footsteps go farther, farther, and farther. 
When we couldn't hear them anymore we both removed the branches as quickly as we could and sprinted to my house. We called the police, but couldn't do much since we didn't get the license plate. So we just dropped the whole thing and moved on. That was easily the scariest moment in my life. This moment hasn't ruined Halloween for me though and I still love the holiday. I'm sure I'll never forget this moment though.